Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, and uh, really good to connect back with all of you in this course of Believer's Authority. Um, we will pray, and then we will get into the subject for today. Uh, would anyone like to lead in prayer? Please feel free to take the mic and uh, pray. Either of you, one of you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. And thank you for this morning. We are gathering for your name. We are gathering for your name to walk and walk your words in the Spirit of Father. Lord, I stand for everyone who is Spirit of Father. Lord, you guide us, lead us, Holy Spirit of Father. Give your blessings, give your knowledge and power. Give your concentration, Holy Spirit, my Father. Help you understand your word and especially pray for the Nazim as well. Hence, Lord, in talk with Castro in our name. Lord, thank you for this time. I especially bless you with your hands today. You want to guide this board process. And I ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank you, Sabita. Uh, in the last class, we began with an introduction about authority, and we understood what authority stands for. And we saw that there are many examples of authority in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, we recognize that when there is authority, there is influence. Okay, One can use it for good influence or unfortunately, authority can also be misused. Uh, and similarly, something that is sad is to not use the authority at all. So we, we went through, um, went through, you know, elaborately regarding authority and we saw how authority is generally given to somebody or it is vested on someone and uh, they can use that authority to enforce uh, whatever they, they are supposed to enforce in, in that given sphere. We also saw that authority, it uh, need not necessarily depend on one's ability like your natural abilities. In the example of a traffic police who may not be so uh, strong looking and yet has been vested with authority as a traffic police, we know that we follow their, their instructions because uh, they, are, they are selected by the government, trained by the government, appointed by the government to do their job. So we still do it because they carry authority. So these were some of the things that we looked at. And uh, after discussing these things, we said that God has given us spiritual authority, which we should utilize. Now, why should we utilize our spiritual authority? We said that we have an active enemy in Satan who comes against us. We know that this world is corrupted with sin, right? And uh, uh, therefore, there's a battle for us to live pure, live holy, live righteous before the Lord. Uh, and as we are going through these things, fighting against sin, fighting against Satan, we would also see that the Bible teaches us that we have to fight against worldliness or the world, the influences, the lusts of the world. Uh, we can enforce our authority and we can overcome. We can live an overcoming life. There are certain times when uh, Satan and his demons can cause a demonic disruption. Even in those moments, we can overcome because we carry authority. And this authority will help us to assist others who may be oppressed by demonic powers. Um, and this authority will help us fulfill God's purpose for our lives. So this is just a quick recap of what we had done in the last class. And um, we were then taking time to understand that God has created man and woman with authority. So we have been created with authority. When God created us, at that very time, we looked at passages like Genesis 1, verses 26 to 28, where God says, okay, you know, you need to rule over, uh, uh, you, ru you rule over the earth, you rule over the creatures of the earth. So God gave man dominion and authority. We saw how in Psalm 115 and verse 16, the scripture says that the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth uh, is given to the sons of men. So we have been given authority by God to take charge 
on the earth. Uh, we, we said that we have been created in the likeness of God. Okay, so that also gives us um, the ability, the ability to govern the way God governs. Of course, we are not God, but God has created us um, with a certain glory as human beings. And uh, we can, you know, take charge and we can, uh, if, if you may say, steward the blessings and, you know, all the things that God has entrusted us with. Uh, but what happened is because of disobedience or we call it the fall man lost that opportunity see man could have been um, a, a person who represented god very well on the earth but he lost that opportunity because of the fall and we know that satan i was just telling us that when it comes to the temptation of jesus we find that satan uh, tells jesus if you bow down, if you worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of this world. But then we have to ask the question, the kingdoms of the earth were given to man. Now, how is it that it has shifted into Satan, Satan's hands? It's because of the fall. At the fall, these things happened. It got shifted to Satan. But thank God, Jesus came. He died on the cross, which is actually our victory. You know, it may seem a, like a, a, a very defeated picture to look at the cross and Jesus hang on the cross. But it was God's plan. And Paul talks about it. You know, Paul says it's foolishness to the world. Like, how come, you know, uh, uh, Jesus came and he died on the cross and he set us free. To the world, it is foolishness. But to us who are getting saved, right, this is the wisdom of God. This is the victory of God. So through what Jesus did, we have actually conquered. And he has given back that authority that Satan had taken. So that is why today you and I, we are sitting in this class as believers and we are discussing about believers' authority because we can use it now. Satan cannot come and tell us, uh, why, are you, why are you trying to do all these things, you know, like you don't have any authority. We can say, Satan, you're lying. Jesus has won the victory over you, over sin, over the world. And I have dominion and authority because he's given it back to me. You remember Jesus said, right, that I give you the keys of the kingdom. What is keys? Authority. We discussed that. When we see keys, it uh, is a picture of access to resources, access to influence. So uh, it's a, it's, it represents spiritual authority, the original authority that God wanted for us, it has been restored to us. Okay, so now it is our turn to understand it and use it. So this in a gist is what we talked about in the last class. Now we'll go on to talking about the influence of the spirit world on the natural world. So far, we said that God created us or designed us with authority. We lost it. Jesus redeemed us, gave us back that authority. Now we can use it. But from this point onwards, we'll also delve a little deeper into um, who this enemy is that we are facing. Okay. Now, when we consider uh, the spiritual realm, as believers, which kingdom do we belong to? Any idea? <coughs> Sorry. Okay, God's kingdom. How many kingdoms are there? We belong to God's kingdom, but are there any other kingdoms? Hmm? Kingdom of darkness. Okay, kingdom of darkness, Satan's kingdom. Right. So in the Bible, we understand that there are two kingdoms kingdom of God and the kingdom in which Satan rules and reigns. So we could also term them as uh, kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness. Now, what we have to recognize is that both of these kingdoms are not independent of each other. It's not like something uh, like, okay, we'll, we'll come to that anyway. So now let's talk about natural realm and spiritual realm okay natural realm and spiritual realm when we enlisted these two kingdoms 
Okay. Can we see this kingdom in, in this world on this earth? Can we see it with our physical eyes? We can't because it's, it's not a natural kingdom that we are talking about. These are spiritual kingdoms. So we can perceive through our spiritual eyes. Okay. However, there is some form of um, influence of the natural realm on the spiritual realm and the spiritual realm on the natural realm. These things happen. How do these things happen is what we are going to look at right now. Okay? So that uh, we can understand, you know, we can understand uh, how the spirit world I'm just calling it the spirit world. I know it sounds very fancy and all, but all I'm trying to say is there is a spiritual kingdom and the operations of the spiritual kingdom affect the natural kingdom and the operations of the natural kingdom affect the spiritual kingdom. So the spirit world, okay, it can have an influence on the natural world. We just said that Jesus bought the authority and he gave it back to us. Now tell me, how can this, uh, in this, from the spirit world, the, the kingdom of darkness, how can that kingdom of darkness still affect the earth or the people on the earth if Jesus already won the victory for us on the cross? How is it possible? He? When we yield, okay. So when believers yield, it can affect us. You're right. Okay. See, sister, the... can I say something? Yes, yes, Sister Gertrude. Yeah, there are three realms. The realm that we can see through our naked eye. Then the second realm, the Satan uh, dominates. And the third uh, heaven is uh, where God rules. So mm. when we pray, our prayers are affected uh, by the Satan uh, in the second heaven. Mm. Okay, so you're, you're talking about uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of uh, Satan, uh, second yes. heavens and, uh, you know, the third heavens. We are just classifying them as uh, the spirit realm. Okay. Okay, so same thing, sister. Yeah, you brought a different categorization. Uh, whereas we're, we're saying the same thing, there's a natural... No, you said how it is affected because they are prayers and they can hinder our prayers. Yes, yeah. So they can hinder our prayers. So that's one of the ways in which, um, you know, the demonic realm functions. My question is, we just said that Jesus has won the victory on the cross and we are redeemed. Now, if Jesus has won the victory and given us back that dominion, how can the kingdom of darkness still have influence in the earth? That is my question. Hmm? Sinful nature. Okay. Uh, sinful nature, is it? Sinful nature. I, I heard that from someone. Uh, please hold on. Someone here in class wants to answer. Maybe you can use the mic. Then they can hear you. Because of uh, satanic env environment, uh, which we are seeing beside of us, because of that also. No, but Jesus already won the victory on the cross. No. Why is Satan still doing all these things? You're right. You're, you're telling me what's happening. I agree with you. But I'm asking you why. Why not have Satan fully out? Because Jesus did everything that needed to be done. Correct. Okay, don't get stressed. Now I'll come here, Andrew, because he is the prince of the world according to the Bible. Okay, so Andrew says because Satan is the prince of the world according to the Bible. Uh, Shani, I, I thought you raised your hand. Did you want to say something? Oh, I was just said, I was going to say sin. Somebody else had already said that. I was going to say that. I was going to say that through sin, people sinning, that's how he can have. But somebody else has said that right before I said it, though. Yes, yes. Some, yeah, someone else also said sin. Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, Parmita, did, did you want to say something? 
मैम बिकॉज क्राइस सेव डस एंड बिफोर इट वॉज सोटन यू हैड ऑल द ऑथोरिटी आफ्टर एडम सो ही वॉज ऑब्वियसली सोटन वुड फील एंग्री दैट वाई हीज इज इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन पीपल डिस्ट्रेक्टेड okay so it it's like uh, retaliation from satan's side fine you know everyone's presented their views so how do how do we uh, you know reconcile this see jesus has already done the work of salvation the work of redemption on the cross but the age that we are living in right now or the time that we are living in right now we are able to receive from the work of jesus if we believe in what he has done so if you and i we are believers then we have salvation if we believe in the lord jesus christ then uh, you know we we now have been redeemed restored authority has been restored to us but it doesn't apply to those who have not believed you understood but if we if we study scriptures it reveals to us that the way things will unfold in the world and we are seeing that right now you know uh, the manner in which eschatology we call it like the end of the world how things are going to proceed there will come a time when now whatever satan is doing okay he is already defeated he is a defeated enemy but he still has time on the earth that's the answer he still has some time on the earth so he is doing everything in his power we'll talk we'll come to that later everything in his power to uh, cause destruction in the lives of unbelievers and believers okay is he fully defeated answer is yes he is fully defeated but there is a time duration that he still has on the earth which is what he is trying to utilize and then we see all these demonic oppressions and demonic influences and all of that okay so that's how we understand it so now that we we recognize why this is still happening and the earth is still corrupted by sin there will come a time when the redemption that jesus has provided on the cross it will be brought to completion at that time you know, the bible talks about a change a total transformation of the world itself right new heavens new earth so much is going to happen the millennial period rule and reign of christ a lot of things are going to happen which we will see okay uh but there's a timeline to everything right now satan is still active he has not been bound he has not been thrown out of the Earth. and that is the reason we still have him interfering and influencing the natural realm okay so uh, with that understanding let's now talk about some of these influences there is a spirit world and right now i'm only going to talk about satan and his demons okay uh, there in the spirit world we also have god we have other heavenly hosts god is a spirit who is god he is a spirit he doesn't have a body like us god is a spirit angels heavenly hosts who are they spirits so there is a spirit world kingdom of light kingdom of darkness now we we are mainly talking about the kingdom of darkness and their influence so we see that in this world this kingdom of darkness can influence individuals or people you know by themselves this kingdom of darkness can also influence certain circumstances and situations that people go through it can influence world systems there are systems in the world that have a strong influence of the demonic on them uh it can influence regions territories cultural forms organizations institutions activities building spaces and so on so we'll talk about each one of these 
Now, why did we suddenly switch to the influence of the spirit world? Because I want us to understand that as much as there is an influence of the spirit, uh, that kingdom on us, we can overcome. The believer can take authority over whatever Satan is trying to do. So uh, we can be victorious over the works of the evil one or the kingdom of darkness. So let's consider you know, how exactly uh, the kingdom of darkness influences. We said individuals. In the ministry of Jesus, there were so many people who were demon-possessed. You remember? There's a man called Legion who, um, who lives as an outcast and uh, he has many demons. When Jesus casts out the demons, they pray and they say, okay, allow us to go into the pigs. So who was he? Just one person. But was he under the influence of demons? Yeah, he was in fact possessed by demons. And they were, they had taken full charge of his life. Okay, uh, that he had lost his senses and they literally destroyed his life. So the kingdom of darkness can influence people, individuals. It can be, we'll see later, there are levels of influence. In this particular case that I talked about, it was an, it was a possession. Okay, uh, there is another example. In Acts chapter 13, there is a, uh, there is a, an official by the name of Sergius Paulus uh, in the ministry, uh, I think, yeah, Paul, uh, Paul and Barnabas, they meet this person, Sergius Paulus, and he's very interested to know the gospel. He hears about Jesus and um, he is eager to learn more about Jesus. But with this official is a sorcerer by the name of Elymas or Bar Jesus. Okay, there is a sorcerer. As long as that sorcerer, uh, we don't know what he did, but <coughs> whatever he did was keeping Sergius Paulus away from accepting the truth of the gospel. So Paul observes this, he sees, and then he rebukes the sorcerer, Elymas. You know, he rebukes him and he goes blind. After that, you find that Sergius Paulus um, understands the gospel and he comes to the position of receiving the gospel. So there is, a, there is an influence of the kingdom of darkness on people. This is just one example where uh, people are kept away from God by the work of demons. Maybe they want to know more about Christ, but what are the demons doing? Keeping them blind, keeping them away, deceiving them. Uh, doing playing all these mind games so that people are away from the gospel. So in this way, we find that demons can influence people uh, at many different levels and keep them away from the plans and purposes of God. Why are we talking about this? Because as believers, we know that we can overcome. Right? What did Jesus do? He just went and cast out the demons. How did Paul... You know, and, and the other apostles minister, they took charge. They took charge. Wherever they saw demonic influence, they knew what to do. You know, they prayed and they cast out demons. They did many different things. They overcame. And regions were one for Christ. So uh, let's acknowledge that there is an influence. Now, this is the trick of the devil. Either he wants us to believe that you know, he's so powerful and that uh, he's uh, interfering in everything and he wants us to give him the full attention or he wants us to completely ignore him. Okay. There are believers who say, why are you talking about uh, demonic influence, demonic oppression? There's no need to talk about it. Jesus has won the victory and that's it. Uh, we don't even want to talk about demons. I understand where they are coming from, but if we completely ignore that there are demons, there are negative you know, influences of the kingdom of darkness, Satan is actually happy because he can get away with whatever he wants to do. Believer is not even acknowledging that there is this evil influence. So both these extremes are not good. We should not ignore the existence of Satan and demons, 
at the same time we should not give too much attention you know some people become so um, curious they want to know uh, how are they how do they look you know what do they do a little too much read books about them make notes <laughs> okay so unnecessary that's not needed just have an awareness that yeah this is a reality but as a believer we overcome whenever we see an influence you just overcome keep moving forward that's that's where we should be in that middle place of uh, acknowledging and overcoming okay so let's move on we notice that there can be an influence over individuals there can be an influence over circumstances and situations so uh, in in the writings of paul apostle paul in first thessalonians 5 and verse 18 paul says uh, that uh, you know satan hindered us we wanted to come to you we wanted to do this and that but satan hindered us or he stopped us he did something to um like uh, keep us out of our plans so can satan affect situations circumstances he can can demons affect circumstances situations they can so what should a believer do don't worry too much about it pray ask for wisdom from god how to resolve how to overcome rebuke bind cast out keep moving forward okay but sometimes what believers do is uh, they attribute every thing that went wrong to satan like suppose i'm just giving you an example okay let's say uh, i have to be here at class 9 am maybe preferably 9 at least 9:55 so that we can connect the computer but i leave home late okay so i leave home late and i'm driving away and everything and then comes a traffic jam and i'm sitting there thinking satan is hindering me today you know i wanted to be in class early but what is satan doing he's not letting me go to class on time but whose problem is that i should have left home early isn't it i left late and now satan is sitting there and thinking anything and everything that people do they put the blame on me <laughs> i didn't do anything but people are blaming satan so it is true that satan can influence circumstances and situations but not every problem every challenge every delay that we face is because of satan many of them are because of our own poor choices maybe our own wrong decisions hopefully once it's happened we learn from it and you know we try our best to uh, do it better the next time but yes there can be an influence of satan in circumstances and situations um yes uh, shani so even though as a believer um the devil can influence stuff don't we just have victory through jesus because it says in the bible that he always calls us to triumph and then we have authority so even though he influences don't we always have victory because of jesus you're right so the bible does tell us that we already have the victory through christ all we are doing is we are just acknowledging that there is the existence of an enemy known as satan and i explained earlier that uh, he is not evicted from the earth he still exists and he still continues to influence um things in this world till his time of being bound comes so that's what scriptures tell us so he very much exists and he very much continues to interfere do okay. you have a follow up to that yeah no thank you okay thank you uh, here in the comments uh, sanjay says god has given us free will so we get to choose between light or darkness before our spiritual eyes are open we can't tell between the two kingdoms yes yeah that's true uh, sanjay so we are more aware of both the kingdoms once we are born again so uh, fine so we talked about influence of the kingdom of darkness on individuals circumstances and situations now the next is world systems okay so world systems when we consider this many of you may have heard uh, of the a seven mountain initiative anyone here have you heard about the seven mountains of influence so basically uh, what that teaching says is that um, 
I mean, I'm not trying to uh, promote that teaching or anything. I'm just referring to it. Uh, it. It says that there are all these these uh, systems in the world which have a great influence on society and community. For example, government, religion, family, <coughs> business, arts and entertainment, okay, media, uh, politics. So when we consider these systems, they influence large groups of people. Imagine, you know, education. If the education system is good, it will influence thousands of students who are graduating. Uh, from you know any particular region but if it is bad or if they are teaching something uh, erroneous or wrong what will happen it will affect the lives of people it is influencing so these are all the systems that have great influence on people now we recognize that satan can influence these systems as well now, if we uh, look at the life of uh, Paul and his missionary journeys, we notice that he visited, you know, very many different places. So when he came to a place like Ephesus, there was a worship you know, of, a, of a goddess. And, uh, you know, people were even making idols of that goddess. And the whole place was taken up by uh, worship. And um, it also, like Acts 19, you, you see that uh, it talks about uh, many people who practice black magic okay, being in that space as well. So what's happening? You know, the system in that particular region, their religion, their politics, it was affecting them. But what kind of worship did they have? Was it a worship that uh, worshipped the true and living God? No, it was worship to uh, some other, you know, some other God or goddess uh, and their lifestyle. All those things were affected. So we recognize that Satan can influence right? these huge systems. He can influence business. How can he influence business? He can make it corrupt. No, he, can make, uh, he can make it um, uh, full of uh, evil practices. It, he can fill it with hatred. Where people hate each other for the sake of money. Um, you know, they're hurting each other. Evil things are going on. What Satan does is exactly the opposite of what God is saying, right? So he will influence that business culture or he will influence religion. He will influence politics okay, to kind of tune it to himself. But we as believers, again, we can rise up. We can rise up in prayer. We can rise up in declaration. We can rise up in uh, doing acts of righteousness. Okay, all of these ways we can use to overcome what Satan is doing. Okay, we, can, uh, we can enforce the victory. We've been saying again and again, Jesus already won the victory. Jesus already won the victory. Now we as believers have to enforce that victory. So Satan can influence these world systems. He can affect geographic regions and territories. So similar to uh, what we said just now. If you even take, for example, that city of Ephesus, it's an entire region. Right? It, it's an entire city. The whole city seems to have um, uh, this way of worshipping and a certain lifestyle, all influenced by you know, that, that goddess, Dinah. So can regions, territories be influenced? Yes, they can be influenced by demonic powers. We, when we recognize, we can, of course, go against it. But we'll talk in detail about it later on. Um, then there's a mention of cultural forms. You know, cultural forms being affected by uh, demonic powers. Cultural forms means music, dance, art. Okay. Uh, it can actually be used as an expression of the kingdom of darkness in certain places we as believers what do we do we use these art forms as an expression of worship to our god but what satan likes to do is everything that is pure everything that is genuine clean holy he likes to pollute it he likes to corrupt it makes a counterfeit what's a counterfeit if we have um, uh, like original 500 rupee notes, then 
sometimes there are those fake 500 rupee notes or you know whichever country you come from there's counterfeit currency why is there counterfeit currency to imitate the original but to corrupt the original isn't it so similarly uh, we see that satan tries to influence cultural forms and corrupt it okay so there can be an influence on cultural forms organizations and institutions um, even certain activities let's consider a, a certain place okay uh, and uh, maybe in that in that particular place when it comes to money people deal with corruption or when it comes to just lifestyle you find that there's uh, alcoholism very deep rooted very strong and uh, you're wondering like hey what's happening why are all these people affected all of them are affected they most likely there would be an influence from the spirit realm as well and demons uh, can we we'll, we we'll talk about it later there are all kinds of demons they function in different ways but uh, if that is their function and their role then they are kind of influencing the people to have that wrong lifestyle okay so um, there can be an influence on activities even buildings spaces homes and objects what we'll do right now is let's just take a break we'll come back and then we'll we'll uh, take it further so 10 minute break as of now and then we'll get back into our session thank you